It's Action April, which means that we're exploring action in our photography, any sort of action. I introduced the idea last week, and many of you have shared your own images on my Facebook page, on Instagram, and on Twitter. I took a trip to the art museum and looked around at how artists throughout history have used action in one way or another to create a more interesting visual. First, let's look at something that is probably what you would initially think of when you hear the word action. This panther is frozen, mid-stride. His muscles are flexed, he's crouched down, and we as viewers immediately know that he's stalking his prey. I mean, he's made of bronze, he's not going anywhere, but I still kind of want to move out of his line of sight, just to be on the safe side. And then to contrast it, take a look at this painting. It's very static. You don't get a sense that either person is in motion at all. Back to action. What about less overt action? Let's call it movement. Take a look at this painting. This woman is obviously doing something. She's braiding her hair or combing her fingers through it. And we can tell that we're seeing her in motion. We can see here that her finger is cocked out. It all just seems very natural, like she is actually doing something rather than posing as though she were doing something. Next, let's look at something else. Maybe the subject isn't in motion, but something else is going on, like wind, which is whipping through their hair or tossing their clothing about. In this sculpture, the man's hair is blowing in the wind. And in this sculpture, the fringe at the bottom of her dress is blowing in the wind or because of her own movement, maybe. Touches like these create a dynamic look to an otherwise still portrait. Now, I know the title of this video is How Artists Show Motion, but I want to throw something else out there. Sometimes artists use motion in a less explicit way. They use your motion, the viewer's motion. For example, in this piece, the artist has created a three-dimensional work where as you walk by it, you see different things. The view changes with each step. Okay, so how can we as photographers show action in our photos? Because motion, or even the suggestion of it, can make a photo more dynamic and more interesting to the viewer. So, how can we learn from these artworks in the museum? I talked about four things today. Action like the panther, movement like the naked lady, wind like the old man, and the viewer's movement like the accordion piece. How can we use those things? Starting with action, like fast action or where the subject is really moving somewhere. It seems obvious how you would capture that kind of action in a photograph, right? Like, just have the subject run or jump or whatever it is that you wanna capture and that can create a cool photo, but it isn't always feasible. Maybe because of space limitations, or maybe you're simply having trouble catching the subject. Practice can always help with catching action, but I've also faked it a little bit. Like, instead of actually walking or running, rocking back and forth as though I was in motion or just taking one step instead of a bunch can help you get the shot because you're limiting the area where the subject is going to be it will naturally be easier to capture them. Plus, you have the added bonus of controlling exactly where they are against the background. You can line them up and have them do the same step several times until you get the shot you want. They'll look as though they were in action, but in reality, they were sort of faking it. Now on to what I called movement, where the subject is doing something, but it's definitely slower than action that we've talked about. What I like to do here is have the subject simply move around. This definitely works in a situation like the lady with the hair, or if you're photographing someone cooking or something else. But maybe you have someone sitting on a stool in the studio for a portrait. I like to direct them to keep moving rather than posing in separate positions. You'll notice that they relax and you end up with a much more natural shot than a stiffly posed portrait. And now for external forces, adding action to the shot. My best example here is wind either created by nature or with a fan. Having the subject's hair or clothing blowing around a bit simply adds interest to the image. Last, I talked about how artists sometimes use the viewer's movement in their work. Now that one would be a little more challenging for us still photographers. We could definitely play with how we display the photographs, maybe print on different types of material that will reflect light differently, depending upon how you look at it. I also saw a work at the museum, which I was not allowed to take a photo of, so I'll have to describe it to you guys, where the artist had three photos printed large and in frames, and then had other photos framed on the opposite side. 
The work was pushed up near a wall so you could only see those opposite side photos by looking at the mirrors that were hanging on the wall behind the photos. It was interesting and what the viewer saw depended completely on how they moved around the work and what they could see in those mirrors. Now I talked about a few things today that struck me while I was walking through the museum. There are certainly many other ways to imbue your photographs with dynamic action to make them more interesting to your viewer. Later this week, I'll share some of my own photos where I used movement to create natural looking portraits. Subscribe to my channel or follow me on Facebook so that you don't miss it.